Hello and welcome to the Poor Hammer Podcast, episode 61. I'm your host, Brad. This is my co-host, Eric. How's it going? We've got a very long time coming episode for you guys today. This episode has been in works since before the YouTube channel. So, today's topic is simple. We are going to tell you which to buy. Your combat patrol, your boarding action, both or neither. It's that simple. Sounds good. Let's lay out some ground rules to start with. So we're going to factor in the general value of models, but the final verdict will be more complicated than just running the math on which box gives you more value. Now, there's a lot of factions to go through, but there's actually five exceptions right off the bat that we can just skip. First up, Imperial Knights, Chaos Knights, Harlequins. None of you have combat patrols or value boxes in general, so it doesn't matter. I would love to see the boarding patrol for knights. Just fantastic. They're not even in the format, so... Yeah. So then, as a fourth exception case, World Eaters only hypothetically has a combat patrol coming before 10th edition, maybe. It's been delayed since the beginning of the year. I don't know when it's going to come out. If it's going to come out? Yeah, and they they flat out said it's not getting a boarding patrol. So there you go. We can skip it. It's a combat patrol that has a ton of troops in one character. Not a fan. Not even a particularly amazing thing, even though it's only theoretical. Imperial Guard, you're the final of the five. You don't get a boarding patrol to compare your combat patrol to. Well. Eh, well. Kinda. So they made Agents of the Imperium into a boarding patrol, which is, from what I can see, just a pile of kill team kits and an Evasaur assassin thrown in there. That's a thing. (laughs) Yeah, hard to say anything about Imperial Guard on that. Like, honestly, and the combat patrol, yeah, it exists. There's nothing particularly great about it, so. All right, with all of those out of the way, we can get into our proper breakdown. We can start things off with Space Marines. As always. And as we go into these, we're going to talk about things in US dollars. We're going to assume everything's MSRP because if it's at a discount, it's probably a static discount on everything. Buy stuff off Amazon at least. It's at least discounted there. And then hopefully your LGS can help you out even more than that. For Space Marines... The first one is the worst one to talk about because they have a lot of combat patrols, technically. At the same time, it's easy to talk about. All the combat patrols are terrible value except for the Phobos Marine one. If you like Phobos Marines, that one's fine to pick up. If you don't, skip it. I think that's fair, yeah. The boarding patrol is kind of a weird mix. It's very cheap. It's also scarily not on the GW site anymore. So hopefully it comes back and isn't some weird limited time thing. That is concerning because, I mean, it's a fine option to pick up. There's nothing inherently bad about it. It's not the most wide of options. You get just troops, essentially, and, like, a captain. But, like, you're going to play them if you're playing Space Marines. So, okay, it's not bad. Yeah, my overall opinion for Space Marines is simple, though. Skip them all, put your money into your piggy bank, and wait 12 to 16 weeks for the new edition. The new box set is going to come out. It's going to have a huge value on it, just like the last one did. Just buy that instead. Yeah, and I mean, you can even get it like secondhand of like just your section. Yeah, or split it with a friend who wants Tyranids. There you go. Yeah, so that's probably the right option. Let's move into Sisters, though. Okay, Sisters is a weird one to talk about. Here's the thing you have to know going in. Sisters is one of the most expensive armies in the game. It is a lot more expensive to collect than several other armies we're going to talk about around it. Yep. From a current points value versus price, these boxes don't look that great. But when you compare it to the rest of the Sisters range, they are good value. Right. So if you know going in, you are okay with the fact that Adeptus Sororitas is one of the most expensive armies to collect, and you're fine with getting into them, both of these boxes actually do offer pretty good deals. And I think that is one of the big things, is that these give a decent amount of options that you would want to have as possibilities to actually play. I think the Boarding Patrol does a better job of it. Yes, they both offer a lot of variety, which is great when you're learning what you like in your faction and build up your first like couple thousand points and then you start slanting the way you really enjoy the faction once you get to play it all 
Right. And of the two, I am also on the side of the boarding patrol is better. The combat patrol should not be ignored, though. It does have easy to build sisters, which means you can't do their options like you can in the boarding patrol. They're whatever you see on the tin is what you can build them as. Which sometimes is nice, though, to build something easy and it's done. True. And there's a couple weird currently under strength units in the rules. I don't know if that will change in 10th edition or what, but if you only own the combat patrol, it's just there are some weird units included. Buying two copies of the combat patrol and one or two of the boarding patrol is honestly still a pretty good deal to start a sister's army. Yeah, it gives you a lot of options as well, because like you'll get the rhinos, so you can play around with that. You've got the seraphim. You have enough battle sisters that actually do stuff with sisters repentia. Like there's a lot of options that you can build with those together. Yeah. So while it's not on the surface as good as the next couple boxes we're going to talk about, knowing what you're getting into, they're good value for the army they are. Yeah. Now, that said, let's talk about the winners. Okay, so Grey Knights. We know the combat patrol's amazing. We did our $500 challenge episode. Yeah. You can go see how crazy it is. Honestly, it's an amazing thing on its own. The boarding patrol is also really good, especially for the price. I do have some concerns because I'm hoping that Grey Knights get an update to the uh, Marine <laughs> But that's not anytime soon, I don't think, so I don't have too much hesitation in suggesting to buy these because, oh boy, are these good value. Yeah, in both cases, it's snap by both for me. Yeah. I would tell you to buy one copy of the Boarding Patrol, you don't want a second crow, and then buy like two copies of your Combat Patrol at least, maybe three. I feel like three of the Combat and one Boarding Patrol is like, you now have Grey Knights. Yeah, you could just play whatever you feel like in Grey Knights. Yeah, I honestly the the boarding patrol does help quite a bit to solve a few of the problems that the combat patrol had as few as those were crow is just also an awesome model so that will help quite a bit as well great nice just get them both and then figure out if you're going to get a second or third combat patrol <laughs> It's also one where, like, yeah, the combat patrol is pretty much perfect, but, like, if you pick up the boarding patrol first because you think Crow is cool, there's no wrong answer. They're so good as boxes in general. Yeah, and, like, even ignoring, like, value and, like, which models are good at the moment, like, this is a wide range of what Grey Knights has access to. You can build things going forward no matter what happens, basically. And the other winner is Custodes. Yeah. They already had quite possibly the best combat patrol, arguably Grey Knights did, and now they have an absolutely wonderful boarding patrol as well. It's one of the cheapest boarding patrols at $110, and it managed to be one of the highest points because of how Custodes works. Good old eight models in the box. <laughs> basically at this point if you want to get into 40k and you have a much smaller budget than you would like it's basically pick gray knights or custodies they're far more comfortable to collect than anything else yeah i mean there's always other options but if you're trying to get gw models and do things normal as so that yeah it's gray knight or custodies yeah honestly they both do a great job of working well together to fully flesh out your ability in the army so, I mean, I think Custodes is snapped by both, but probably not multiple of the boarding patrol. No, I would go one boarding patrol, then you can do one or two combat patrols, and then you basically own 2,000 points at this point, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe get some sisters or something like that. Well, you already have the sisters in the combat patrol. You just need to buy a rhino. Yeah, you just need the rhino for them. Go get yourself a free rhino. We all know that rhinos are free, so. Exactly. That is a slam dunk. So let's move into arguably the most expensive army. Admech are the real losers here. Yeah, they are. At least from an Imperium standpoint, they are. They might just be overall. The worst part is like the boarding patrol. It's okay. It's bad. But then you like look at like how much Admech costs just because all of their models just cost a bunch of money to get an army. And it's like, yeah, the boarding patrol's fine. Yeah, it's so rough because Admech is so expensive that you have to look through the lens when you look at these to like soften the blow of how bad they are. I would never recommend the current combat patrol, to be honest. No, not really. I mean, like if you had it, okay, fine. The boarding patrol will actually be nice to have on 
in addition, but like... They have vaguely talked about Combat Patrol in 10th edition and how it's going to be matched up against each other and be equal. Yeah, we'll see. If this Admech Force is equal to the Custodes Combat Patrol somehow... I guess the Custodes don't get to play with their bikes, their captain... And maybe the Custodians. (laughs) Maybe they get the Sisters of Silence. (laughs) It's... It's ridiculous for them to even say that when they look at this ad mech list for combat patrol. Yeah, so I I want to say just pass on both, but like if you're into ad mech, the boarding patrol's fine. The boarding patrol is one of the better starts you can get currently. Yeah. And just know you're getting into a very expensive army. And it doesn't get cheaper. Like, this isn't like, oh, high cost at the front, and then we'll be able to fill out the... No, it's going to get more expensive. This is the first part of a, a long trek of money. But it is a cool-looking army, so I understand. All right, so let's move into Chaos. We'll start things off with Chaos Space Marines. This one's complicated for me. Yeah? The Combat Patrol is terrible. So let's look at the Boarding Patrol and talk about it here. It's got Abaddon. Yeah, it's also got a bunch of other things that are all the same. Like, it's got 10 CSM Legionnaires and 20 Cultists. It's not a wide range of options. Yeah, it basically comes down to if you own nothing and are trying to get into, like, chaos in general, and you want to get, like, some basic CSM, some Cultists to go with them, and you think Abaddon's cool, it's a good pickup. If you want to play, like, a really nice Night Lords list or something, like, you know what you want to play in CSM, you want something more specific, chances are, if you're not playing Black Legion, you're not wanting to play Abaddon, you're just playing him because his rules are currently very good. Yeah, that's fair. So, it's hard to recommend this box unless you're like, Black Legion is my favorite part of CSM, I really want to play some fluffy Abaddon and his boys. Yeah, I guess, yeah, if you're gonna get Abaddon and you don't really have anything else and you can use 30 other troop options, then yeah, it makes sense. But you're not gonna get a second one of these. No, it's unfortunate because the start collecting box that was replaced by the current combat patrol was better, had more variety, had better units in it, had a better HQ in it, everything about it was better, and it cost a whopping 60 or whatever dollars MSRP less. It was one of the largest noticeable drops in value. Yeah, so it's hard to recommend anything in CSM. I'm going to say boarding patrol if you like Abaddon. Makes sense. If you don't, skip everything and just go buy the models you want i think we got another one also a if you like something get it we're into chaos demons you mean chaos demon corn yeah it's corn (laughs) do you like corn hopefully you like corn (laughs) if you like corn the combat patrol is fantastic you should under no circumstance buy the boarding patrol ever it is 30 less dollars msrp than the combat patrol you lose Three Blood Crushers, which I'm pretty sure are $60 MSRP. You lose your Blood Master. You lose 10 whole Blood Letters. And all you gain is one character. Yeah, I mean, it's a cool one, but it's also not a particularly expensive one to get on its own. And honestly, the Combat Patrol is very good. You could buy two of it from scratch. Go buy yourself a Scar Brand. Go buy yourself a whole Blood Thirster. Whatever you want. Yep. And you probably have a very cool start to a Corn collection that you'll just just build up over time from there. Yeah. Maybe you get into world eaters from there. Who knows? If you don't like corn and you like any of the other demons, both of these boxes are passes. I don't need to tell you that. Yeah, I think it's pretty odd. I mean, just like look at the color scheme. That's good enough to figure it out. <laughs> uh, yeah, Death Guard. Um, your thoughts on Combat Patrol of Death Guard, Brad? Death Guard's really easy. It only has one box. It's the Boarding Patrol. <laughs> They have, without a doubt, one of the worst combat patrols this edition. I think it's the worst. Technically, rules-wise, it's illegal currently. You cannot play the whole combat patrol in the current Death Guard Codex. Yeah! We'll get to another time that this is annoying to me, but, like, if you're going to make a box that's focused around specific rules to be able to play, it should be legal to build the box and then play it. That's, like, the minimum bar, as far as I'm concerned. 
There was a bunch of very entertaining stuff when this box came out and everyone laughed at it. And GW sent out a bunch of questionnaires to random people all over the internet and was like, hey, do you understand what a detachment is? Do you understand what army construction rules are and stuff? And then two years later, we got the announcement of, hey, we're getting rid of all the rules for building an army because we got made fun of on the internet. Yeah, because we don't understand it ourselves. But luckily they do have a boarding patrol, so thoughts on the boarding patrol? It's fine. It's cheap, which saves it. Yeah, there aren't that many models. It's 14 models. To be fair, it's Death Guard. They're beefier models. They're not custodies level expensive per point, but they're beefier boys. They're also not sisters. Yeah, so it's fine that it's a low model count. It is a good V unit you want to be playing for your troop. Ideally, I know that Pox Walkers tended to be good this edition in comparison to your Plague Marines, but it's what you ideally want to be playing in the troop slot. Yeah. It has the coolest Terminators that I think are like the reason you want to play Death Guard half the time because look at those sweet scythes. It really is. Like, the only reason I like any of the Death Guard troops is because of that model. But how useful is the Lord of Virulence? He's a generic HQ. He's not, like, super meta or anything, but he's totally fine. He's new this edition, and he's okay. Okay, because, like, I know that I haven't seen it pop up too often, so I wasn't sure if it was just, like, yeah, it's just trash. But so long as it's not obviously bad, then there's some fine of, like, it'll be probably be a reasonable thing to have options in the future. That's basically the take. It's not fantastic at the moment. It's totally fine for a first HQ. It is very likely when we get the indexes for 10th, edition all the hqs for who's good and who's bad shake up and he might end up being one that you really want to have yeah but likely isn't going to be complete trash also yeah whereas in the combat patrol you have typhus the named character yeah (laughs) this is very clearly just pick the boarding patrol we're done here yeah and a lot of it is because it is cheap yeah to be honest value wise it's not that much money for the models in it but it is a decent discount because it is so cheap Thousand Sons, Brad, let's hear about your Zongors. You love Zongors. I do. Fuck you. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> you love them so much you never play them. Zongor are historically not very good in 40k. They haven't been good since they were added to Thousand Sons. And yet they pushed them all over. It's a famous kit because it gets shoved into every value box between AOS and 40k. It's pretty clear they lost their asses when they designed these things and they did not sell and they are trying desperately to make it look like it was not a loss when they designed them. I absolutely love that you've had this take for like two years or more like since you basically got into it and like every instance I'm like okay maybe he isn't actually like on this crazy conspiracy theory he might have something there. It just keeps happening. Yeah and like okay maybe maybe you got something but I mean the boarding patrol doesn't have zongors okay the boarding patrol also doesn't have an hq and it's not legal to play and it's not legal to play even in boarding patrol god damn <laughs> fuck <laughs> death guard thousands come on there's basic minimum bars gw doesn't pay much attention outside of the imperium oh you're not imperium whatever throw some stuff in the box we're good i hate it i vaguely understand why because it's like on the sprues and like whatever but like fucking hell here's the thing i'm making fun of our boxes my actual opinion on this if you own nothing and you're starting thousand suns today buying one of each of these boxes is a good start yeah buying a duplicate one is bad don't do that here's the thing the combat patrol has the infernal master who is for thousand suns he's like a chaplain equipment for anyone who understands how space marines work he's basically a buff guy he makes people better or makes opponent stuff worse and you get five terminators which are like which are bread and butter big slappy boys yeah you also get 20 trash troops who are fine for like backline objective holders to have 10 of them i've run zongor before i will run zongor again owning 10 to 20 zongor is not a big deal you will at some point want to run that many however again Owning 20 of them means the next time they make a box and randomly throw 10 Zangor in and say, what a deal. It's going to be a lot less of a deal for you when you're like, do I really need my 50th (laughs) Zangor? I say this as a man who owns 40 Zangor. I was like, I'm pretty sure you own 50 and you're probably going to (laughs) keep increasing that number. So it's funny, but... 
Yes, that is. It's a similar thing to when you look at like Space Marine rhinos. Yeah, there's a reason rhinos are free. You have so many rhinos that the new box coming out with a rhino is not good value for you. <laughs> yeah, and nowadays the correct one to talk about is the Impulsor. Yes. The Impulsor is a $70 kit. The Gladiator is a $75 kit that can also be built as an Impulsor or any Gladiator variant. Yeah. And the Impulsor is a $70 kit that gets added to literally every box set, which devalues that box because if you own three Impulsors, you don't want a fourth usually. Yeah. If you own one, you usually don't want two, but there are people out there who like Impulsors, whatever. I was going to say something and then I was like, you know what? That usually is actually a good quantifier. Fair enough. <laughs> Okay, so back to Thousand Suns on the boarding patrol side. While, yes, it's illegal to run the whole box in your boarding patrol because it's two chaos spawn and you can only run a maximum of one with the raw rules, and they're not very good in boarding patrol anyway, but whatever. <laughs> That's because of how the sprue is. It's the same reason you never get five rubric marines in a box because the sprues are built in a way in which you can only ever give the customer ten of them or zero, and they're not just going to give you five extra free ones. Right. So it's two units of rubric and a unit of chaos spawn. On. on paper, it looks like good value because it's cheap. 20 rubrics, solid to own. Yep. 40 rubrics, we're really pushing it here. So this is one of those things where you are fine with the first box, but when they switch up a new value box later on, you're like, I already own 20 rubrics. I guess I could own 30. I'll probably make use of 30 at some point in some list. And then it gets to a point where you're like, I own 40 rubrics. Do I really need 50 of them? Yeah. So while this looks like a good value on paper, it is fairly common knowledge in Thousand Suns and most Chaos communities that the GW Chaos spawn is a massive ripoff. There are 3D models that people print out all the time to act as chaos spawn proxies all over. They're super cheap to get through basically anyone that is not GW. You could custom sculpt it to your own out of some green stuff or whatever. There's a million ways to get chaos spawn for way cheaper than the GW kit, so it looks like better value than it is. Overall though, one copy of each, totally fine to start a collection. Never buy duplicates of these boxes. But I also don't think I would snap by either. I think it would be like, yeah, sure. I'm trying to get into it. It's fine. All right. We spent far too much time with me going way too into detail on Thousand Suns. Let's get faster here. Craft World Eldar. It's snap pick for your combat patrol. There's no reason you would ever choose to take your boarding action over it. There's 20 Corsairs in here and Corsairs aren't even part of Craft World. That boarding patrol is so odd. I don't get it, really. I think the Corsair Void Scars are cool kits, but I'm not sure that that's something that I would tell somebody that's trying to get into collecting to go buy. Even if you're like huge into Howling Banshees, like you're like, oh my god, I want to start Eldar because I think Howling Banshees look good. Which, you know. I have opinions on your taste, but even if you were that person, you get five of them and Jane's are. And then the rest of the box is a whatever to you. Yeah, it just doesn't really make any sense to me. Who would actually get benefit out of buying that? As much as I do think the Void Scars are cool, but like the Combat Patrol? Yeah. Yeah, the Combat Patrol is just a fine, balanced force. Totally good. You could buy two of them and probably run every model and be happy. I think two is about the cap, though. Like threes. Yeah, that's about the limit. You start getting into owning way too many Wind Riders at a point. Yeah, I think that that would become annoying to a certain aspect. But yeah, two of them. Solid value. Drukari. All right, Drukari is a fun one. We have historically one of the best combat patrols. It's very good. It's solid. I would definitely say you can't go wrong buying as many copies as you like. <laughs> wow. The boarding patrol is icing on the cake. If you like witches and you're like, ooh, I want to play the gimp suit biker girls and boys, you could go the boarding patrol route. It's a fine value because it is cheap. It's just a question of what parts of Drakari do you like? It's essentially three sub armies that are all souped together in one evil scheming overarching army. Do you like witches? Boarding patrol is a good value. Do you like Incubi slash Drakari as a whole because the boats are insane? value in this box the combat patrol is really good <laughs> yeah and i mean i think the combat patrols like the default go to pick one up and then if you're into the witches pick up the boarding patrol and 
both of them together is a great option. You get to figure out what you like, essentially. Mm -hmm. And it's an embarrassment of riches. Like, yeah, whatever you like, as long as you're not like me and a huge Covens fan, you've got a great value box. Got them. But uh, I'm happy for us. Drukari, if you're looking to join Kamara, fantastic entry points for you. Yeah, definitely. And I don't think you can go wrong with getting two of either, but the boarding patrol, you have to be really set on the witches. They're the part of the army I hate, which is why I'm not more excited. Yeah, that's why I'm saying like it would be fine to have two of them. But like if you're going to get two, you have to know you like witches. Yeah. All right, let's go on to Tau. Tau is a really easy one for me. You have Farsight and Crisis Suits and your basic troop all in a box together, and it's cheaper than the other box. Just buy the Boarding Patrol. <laughs> I, I think that that's where it comes down to, honestly, at the end of the day is the Boarding Patrol's cheaper, and I feel like you're getting the same amount of value out of either of them, whereas the Boarding Patrol has more general play. The Combat Patrol Ethereal is a bit more focused now in current rules there's a weird thing where farsight the character can only be run in farsight enclaves which is the people under him lore wise they hate the ethereals they're like the rebels and the ethereals are the current rulers if you're getting into tau if you buy both boxes you can't play the ethereal in farsight enclaves you can't play farsight outside of farsight enclaves right So you could end up using both, playing them casually, and just picking and choosing which one you want to play at any given time. I don't know if these rules are going to change in 10th edition and ease up so that it's easier for new players to just mash a list together and go on their merry way, not caring about the lore. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. Like, there could be something about, like, the Tyranid evasion has forced them to work together. Yeah, whatever they choose to do with it. It's not the biggest deal, and Ethereal's not that many points anyways, so it's not like... Like it's a big loss to have to sideline them. Right. And the rest of it is still a solid value. It gives you enough other things. Yeah, there's no crazy overlap other than both of them include 10 troops, which is going to be bog standard. I think both of them having 10 is fine. Every box basically will. Yeah, but like if either of them had 20 and one of them had 10, then it'd be like, okay, well, maybe we have too many warriors. But like both of them having 10, it just gives you enough options to honestly field more than just mech suits. (laughs) Like Christ's battle suits are great and all, but like you have to have a little bit more sometimes. So it's nice to have fire warriors. Honestly, I think they're both cool, but the boarding patrol's cheaper. It's cheaper. Farsight's the coolest sculpt that Tau has ever seen, other than maybe the Riptide. I feel like you just angered a bunch of people. I'm sure I angered people who think Crute are cool, but... (laughs) I Yeah, maybe. Yeah, let's let's move on to Tyranids. Here's your quick answer. Look at this combat patrol. Look at this boarding patrol. Uh, put your money back in your wallet. Wait for 10th edition. Yeah. Whatever the value box is, every Space Marine player on Earth, including all the ones I just advised, are going to be picking it up, and they're all going to want the Space Marines and not the Tyranids, meaning you get to do what us Necron players did this edition and pick up your half for super cheap, possibly multiple copies of it. Yeah, and like... Like, even if you don't get it super cheap or whatever and you just buy the box, it'll probably still be fine value for the Tyranid part. I do think that since we're a bit out from that aspect, you know, about actually acquiring those models, and if you can't wait, I think the Termagants that we currently have are kind of cute looking. So you could pick up just a box of them and, like, figure out your paint schemes and that kind of stuff. Don't go full into either of these combat or boarding patrols because they're just going to look old and busted compared to your new hotness. All right, on to Gene Stealers. This one is a little bit weird. Gene Stealers, like we talked about with Sisters and Admech, is one of the most expensive armies to collect. It is essentially a horde army. It has very modern sculpts, meaning they're very overpriced sculpts. So in a vacuum, if you're just looking at points per dollar spent, these don't look that great. However, from the standpoint of Gene Stealer cults specifically, if you're looking to get into them, what the Combat Patrol does for Gene Stealer cults is probably better than what any 
other combat patrol does for its army. It's in the top. It's sitting with Grey Knights and Custodes, to put it that way. It's tough to beat Grey Knights or Custodes, but it's it's up in the, that same tier of like, it does what you want. I would put this above them in importance because this does more for you as a Gene Stealer player than those will as their players because you don't need the discount as badly, if that makes sense. I see what you're saying of like, since this is a horde army that's also expensive because of those newer sculpts and that kind of stuff. In the case of Gene Stealer cults, the combat patrol is essentially buy it until you don't want any more neophytes. <laughs> By the way, if you play Gene Stealer Cults, the average list runs 60 to 100. Yeah, I was like, it comes with 20. How many should you get? Well, okay, yeah, that's three of them make sense. The Rock Grinder is also the Goliath Truck, so it's your tank and your transport. The Magnus is kind of a loss after the first one, but whatever. It's neat for kit bashing. I've used it for all sorts of different projects. Yeah. Aberrants are fine to run 15 of or more if you like playing Twisted Helix style play into the big chunky boys yeah acolyte hybrids or metamorphs whatever you build them as are always fine so far since gene sealers has been brought back they're not always the best but sometimes they're better than others you know how it works with balance yeah there's not a dead thing in the combat patrol honestly there's a great depth of options that you get it's not just all in a specific unit or a character or whatever it's you get the range now we move over to the boarding patrol Patrol, and I don't think it's as good as the combat patrol is at its job. But it is more focused. And eventually you're going to run out of neophytes you want. At some point there is too many neophytes. And you might not want 60 to 100 of them. Yeah. Hey, I don't think they're that great. Maybe I'll own 20 to 40 of them and I just don't like using them that often. I tend to focus on lists that are more aberrant, heavy or whatever. Yeah. And I think that that's perfectly reasonable. Like if I was to do Gene Stealers, I would be more aberrant side. And so I would be more interested in the boarding patrol i'd still get the combat patrol it's just a good starting point but the boarding patrol focuses a bit more onto the aberrant side of what you're looking at yeah so i would cap out at one copy of the boarding patrol yeah it's fine to make it your starting point but don't buy multiple copies because keller morph is a unique hq you're only going to take one of abominant you're never taking more than one of what? the secondary you you can't Tarek. yeah but they're cool sure but these are characters you're not going to be trying to get more than one copy of. So you basically buy the boarding patrol and then you're done. Yep. And then you can move over and see if you want the combat patrol. And it's probably a good idea to look at getting at least one of the combat patrols. Yeah, just from a pure value standpoint, it's really good. All right, so snap by either one you like, possibly many of them, because to be honest, it lets you just build Gene Stealer cults. Yeah. We can move on to Votan. I mean... They're new. Votan, I can't say I liked the combat patrol when it got revealed. It's not bad. I mean, part of the reason is you don't like the berserker style. I don't like just being a slayer naked dwarf. Like, I get it, but it's not my jam. So you definitely have some bias towards it, but even stepping away, it's not bad, but it's definitely not as good as it could have been. You have to like the Pioneer's aesthetic. Yeah. You're getting value out of it, but it's like, eh. It's fine to have one. To me, the Boarding Patrol is just such a good balance for a first thing to buy. Yes. So you end up with a champion to act as your character. You end up with 10 of your basic troop. You get five of your Terminator equivalent type unit, like your heavy armor one. And you still get five Berserkers. So you have your fast attack, trade piece type, run up, swing, kill stuff, then immediately die. Yeah. I mean, really, the difference between the two is the Pioneer's or the Terminators. And to me, it's especially because this boarding patrol is not priced yet, but it's none of them are equal to the combat patrol yet. If this is cheaper than the combat patrol, yeah, there is no doubt in my mind you should be going with the boarding patrol. And I think that's where I'm at as well. It depends on the price, but if it follows as expected and it's cheaper, I think it's the better option to get into. And I don't think the combat patrol is bad. 
No, if you want to pick up both, there's no problem with picking up both. Yeah. And at a certain point, like, you're a new army, so you don't have that much to really figure out in options. And, like, you can collect things. <laughs> you only have so many thing options to actually collect. So it's not that big of a deal to pick up both of them. And just if you don't want to use all of those berserkers, that's fine. All right, let's move into Necrons. This one's going to be quick. Yeah, you love that combat patrol, don't you? Never by the Necron Combat Patrol. End of PSA. It's so bad. The Necron Boarding Patrol is interesting. It's kind of weird in the fact that it doesn't have an HQ, so it's kind of weird to recommend for someone's first box. It's so weird. It's Necrons. How do you not have an HQ? Necrons is currently the starter box opponent to Space Marines until 12, 16 weeks from now. Because of that, there is a trillion overlords for like $7 or less online on eBay or Amazon or wherever. You can buy an HQ or probably already have one from a starter box when you learn to play, whatever. If you're looking to get into Necrons, having an HQ is not going to be your problem. With that out of the way, the boarding patrol is like one of the best boarding patrols from a money value standpoint. Technically, there's some asterisks there of like, there are trick ways to get Necron warriors cheaper. We'll cover that one day. Yeah, but I mean, even like, yeah, it's good value. It also has good options to play around with. It's got destroyers, it's got Canoptic, it's got the warriors, it's got Lich Guard, like, cool. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and if you were to even end up with two of these, you end up with 20 warriors. Warriors tend to get spammed, so when you play them, you tend to play a lot or none. Yeah. You end up with six scarabs. Sure, I love scarabs. I own more than anyone could ever legally run, and you can't stop me. You own an absolute shitload of scarabs, and I support that. I completely support that. Painting scarabs is like a zen project, by the way, if you need to cool off for the night. Fair. You end up with, if you build your first 10 as Lich Guards, you could then switch them over and build Triarch Praetorians and still get value. Yeah. And I mean, I own 20 plus Lich Guards, so. Honestly, 20 Lich Guard is not terrible. No, especially if you're not like me, where I just have them all sword and board because I like how that looks and I think that's how Lich Guard should look. If you want to have some with the scythe look, then you could split them up and have half one way, half the other. Yeah. But Triarch Praetorians is another cool alt build for that. And you end up with six of the Ophidian Destroyers, which is fine. Like, multiple versions of the Combat Patrol, still pretty good value. Especially if you started with, like, a starter box and you end up with, like, you have score packs from that, maybe another 10 Warriors and an HQ. Yeah. Solid start. Just don't waste your money on the Combat Patrol, please. Yeah. And I think two of the Boarding Patrols would be perfectly fine. One, it was, I think, a snap. I think the first Boarding Patrol you buy is amazing. The second one is, like, a... If you're really into these units, go for it. It's not a bad deal by any means, but... Right. I guess we can move on into orcs. So our final one here, I think it's a pretty awesome one. Yeah, let's round it out strong. The orc combat patrol, it comes with 20 boys. That's a great start. (laughs) They are the new monopose boys, but I already saw things online about how to... Yeah use other kits to like fix them up and all that so and i honestly don't hate these monopose ones i think they're good i like them other than the fact that the weapons is weird because technically you end up with a weird amount of shooters versus choppas that is a problem yeah in my opinion that's why those guides exist as opposed to like oh it's just monopose but yeah 20 boys good start three def cop does hell yes then the Death Dread, it's awesome. And you also get a War Boss and Mega Armor. Like, everything in there, perfect. It is a great starting point. You'll get to play around with the mech-style stuff. You also have the boys to actually, like, play orcs, essentially. So, fantastic job. You do miss out on a few things, like the squig side of orcs. You won't really get to enjoy, but that's okay. It's still a great start. I think it's a snap by combat patrol. All right, what about the boarding patrol then? This is also awesome once. (laughs) I think that's my opinion on it too. It's actually my favorite of the two the first time you buy it because I think commandos are the best kid in orcs. I agree, 100%. I love the commando loadout. I love how they look. Such a cool model, such a cool loadout. And you get 10 of them with the bomb squake and distraction garot, which is important in my opinion, that they don't leave those out. You also get some of the beast naga boys, good value. Five flash kits. I love the first five flash kits as an option. And you get boss snickrot. Boss Nickrot is very cool. I think he's one of my favorite characters in orcs. 
and you also have the commandos to go with it. Fantastic start. You don't want two of them, though. Yeah, Snickrot is a bunch of the value here, and when you take Snickrot out of the box for your second box you're buying, you won't want a second of the named character. You lose too much value, and you should just individually buy the items that you want from it. Yeah. The only concern I have is the commandos is a kill team, so, like, sometimes you might have issues of availability on that. Yeah, they've been hard for us to get locally when Eric wants. Yeah, so it's one of those, like, e the second one, I could see people buying just because commandos are hard to get. And, like, having the extra boys and flash gets fine. You're spending a bit more than you probably should because the second snick rot isn't going to be that helpful unless somebody has some great kit bashes to use for other things that I don't know about. <laughs> but the first boarding patrol is slam dunk awesome. And the combat patrol is great as well. I think both of them snap by. All right. So there you go. That finishes off every faction and which one we advise for combat patrol or boarding patrol or both or neither. Don't be afraid of duplicates of some of these. They're really good to build out the core of your army. Honestly, solid options to building out and starting collecting for many of the armies with asterisks involved. Yeah, I think that apart from trying to do like we've done before with like challenge runs of doing like a $500 army, boarding patrols and combat patrols have been amazing. Yeah. Maybe boarding patrols have made it so a couple more $500 armies can exist. I've been wanting to do a follow-up to that episode at some point. I think I'm going to wait until 10th edition hits and try to do version 2.0. I was just going to say it might be a good idea to wait until 10th edition, so... <laughs> I'm not insane. I'm not going to <laughs> suffer through an entire week of doing math only to have them drop the points the next week. I mean, that sounds like something you would do. I wouldn't do it twice. <laughs> All right, so hopefully this was helpful to you. Try checking out some of our other content. Make sure you subscribe if you really enjoy us and want to see what we do in the future. Doing all the YouTube pleasantries will help us out too, so that'd be a nice thank you. But before we get out of here, there is a quick bit of news. We have a poll that our patrons were voting on that we had an extra vote for all of YouTube as a celebration where we were trying to figure out what book we're going to do for our first 40k book club. This is going to be our first attempt at this. We tried to make the list like 10 books that we thought were good intro level books and by a single vote on the Patreon poll, The Infinite and the Divine won. Yeah, it was honestly a very close for a lot of the vote. Like, a lot of the time, they were neck and neck. There was a solid bit where Assassin Orum was in first place, and I was super happy. But I'm fine with getting an excuse to reread Infinite and Divine. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. The YouTube poll also had Infinite and Divine win by a pretty good margin. So that was one extra point for it. So it technically won by two. There you go. It's a very good book. I have many good things to say about it. Please make sure you read it before we do that episode. And I would love to walk you all through my thoughts on it. All right, with that celebratory news out of the way, let's get out of here. Sounds good.